verse 15. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of endless life. I need a writer. Just recompense and reward, and it does. 
How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing the witness, both the signs and the apostles, both the signs and wonders, and with divers and miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Look that again. In the beginning, the apostles worked a lot of miracles. I believe that the church was born with the day of Pentecost, the 3,000 came in, I don't believe there's a sick person in there. I believe when 5,000 more came in, they could total 8,000, there wasn't a sick person in there. To answer to the type in the Old Testament, when he saved Israel, 600,000 out of Egypt, there wasn't a sick one among them. But then God allowed the sickness to come. He allowed Satan to bring the sickness. That his promises might be confirmed, that these men might work miracles, that they realize that these are special men of God, the apostles. That's why I'm convinced that Stephen should have been an apostle, because he's the only person of the list of those big who worked miracles. Nobody else did. And he was the next apostle in line. And God had Saul come to town. They said they stoned Stephen. They laid their coats down at the feet of a young man named Saul, which means Saul authorized the killing of Stephen. And so since God allowed him, allowed Satan to use him to kill the next apostle that he was going to appoint, he made him the apostle. It just shows the power of God to save somebody. And he gave him different miracles, he gives the Holy Ghost, but the key part is according to his own will, when God got ready to stop it, he stopped it. We have people in church today who complain about the fact that, you know, we need to demonstrate more of the Holy Ghost power. They talk about the apostle laying hands on people and how they got healed and what Jesus did everything. They missed the point. That's a whole different thing. The will of God changed. It's just like speaking in tongues. When Paul writes about speaking in tongues in the church service, he said, speak in tongues by course. Meaning, you got, you know, again, it's the same law applies out of the mouth of two or three witnesses that ever were established. So Paul saying speak in tongues in church service, have more than two or three people do it. Do you speak in tongues? And then you quit. Now some people I've heard, I've heard some of things that I've been in church in my life. Some people say, well, you know, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stop. Well, that kind of gets the scripture. The scripture says the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. Because when they can stop, they kind of get ready. Okay? But let's say, if you were back in the early days of the church, say, so roller speaking in tongues, and then just stop. And that's the mom was saying, see, you know, the spirit's there, but what's he saying? And then let's say Megan speaks in tongues. And then she stops. And then DeAndre speaks. And then he stops. And he says, and then that one interpreter. That one person interpret what all three said. But as God began to put ministers in the church and pastors in the congregation, the need for speaking in tongues ceased. He said there'd be no interpreter to let them remain silent in the church. And I can tell you, in this day and age we're living, speaking in tongues in church is just about, it's, it's, it's pretty much like can. The church got a whole bunch of folks in church speaking in tongues at the same time. You know? I, still, I still want to buy that miracle that, uh, that, that, that Benny Hill, Benny Hill did, I'm um, talking Benny Hill, that's my boy. But Benny Hill did, and that time he turned around to look at the choir and did like that. And the whole choir fell out, you know, and I said, I, I want to buy that one. Sam and the purchase of the Holy Ghost Park. I want to buy that one, okay? Just, just come on Sunday, just back to, to you guys and all your chairs fall over backwards. Some people think that's just the power of God working. God has worked that way. Throughout the scriptures, the time the power of God works, he raised folks up. He doesn't knock them down. He got somebody you know, who comes to church and then they hang on him, hit him hard in the head and say, be healed. And they fall out, and then you got these, these Charlie Addises behind them, and they catch them so they can lay down easy. The Holy Ghost knocked them out, and the Holy Ghost let them down. That's not funny. The Holy Ghost will heal your body and knock you out in the spirit, and then hurt your back falling down. Does that make sense to you? Does that just mean? God is not, he does, he does not work well with others. He does not need somebody to help him do his job. He's going to knock you out in the spirit, but then somebody got to make sure you don't hurt yourself. There's been a lot of foolishness. Cuddled in church for a long time. So after a while, Paul said, I, am, I 
Thanks, Timothy. Meaning that. My man named Titus. They said, I left him back in my league. This sick. What happened to, what happened to your young man, Timothy Paul? He said, according to his own will. He stopped building clothes. How about tongues? According to his own will. He stopped doing that. Okay? For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come? Where we speak? But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Good question. Man, particularly when you watch some of these shows about the universe, you realize we're specks among specks. Our whole planet, when you compare it, put it alongside the, the Milky Way galaxy we're in, it's a speck. When you compare it within the solar system and put it next to Jupiter or next to the Sun, it's a tiny speck. Full of specks. And so the, the writer here, this was David writing this from the song, he said, What is man that you actually think about him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Why would God bother to visit us? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. When he did the creative work in the Garden of Eden, he, he committed to Adam. to him to dress it and keep it. He put Adam over the works of all his hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under, under his feet. For that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. What for? He tells you, for the suffering of death, which shows clearly angels don't die. Angels are forever. That's why that book, that book that fell with Lucifer, that, that, those fallen angels, it says he hath reserved and changed of darkness until the day of their judgment, but they never die. They're around forever. But he made himself says again, Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, which means he was made a man, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Understand something. Death is not a spiritual event. Death is as carnal as you can. For sin, a carnal act, comes death. That's why Jesus could say that whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Why? Because he tasted death for us. And he that is dead and believeth in me shall live again. When he died, he tasted death for the time he was raised. Those who accept what he did. For it came him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and I'm going to get to, and the Lord's going to, we have, if I can see so far, chapters 8, 9, and 10, in Hebrews, it'll come to the high priest. And I expect God to go back to Colossians, like he told us, and finish up this run in Colossians. But the thing with Colossians right here is one verse. For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all the one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church. Will I sing praise unto thee? And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, as I said, Paul writes sometimes, he gets on the roll. He doesn't tell you who wrote it. He says, again, and then again, and again. Okay? And again, I'll put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me, he calls his children. He was deeper than that he calls us his brothers. Now here's the key verse. 
For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. That's why you can justify then a carnal commandment and make it applicable to Jesus. Not that he was ever carnal, but he became carnal when he took upon the likeness of sinful flesh and became us. And that was his horror story on the cross when he prayed and said, My God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Because at that point he became the victim of a carnal commandment because he identified with carnal men and tasted death for him. Okay? That beats a really interesting question. Let's just read some more and see what else I got to say. Okay? For as much as the children are protectors of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him to have the power of death, that is, the devil. I mean, you have to understand what the enormity of this verse. He talks about man being made a little lower than the angels. So the angels are superior to man. But at the same time, you have a hierarchy of angels, whereby some angels are inferior or superior to other angels. The, the Prince of Persia, he talks about in Daniel, he's a superior angel. He was an angel over an entire realm, known today as Iran and Iraq, but that was his territory. And he rose supreme. And it took both Michael, who was also in a superior rank or category of angel. Michael, when, when, when the Prince of Persia held up Gabriel for 21 days and interrogated him about what did Daniel pray, that was God's answer. Michael was dispatched, and Michael didn't jump in the fight, and he grabbed, <laughs> he grabbed the Prince of Persia's arms, and Gabriel escaped. And Gabriel told Daniel, he said, when I go back, we're going to go, Daniel, or Michael and I are going to continue this fight with the Prince of Persia, and we're going to get rid of him. And he says, and when we get rid of him and dispatch and expel him from the heavens, he said, then the Prince of Grisha is going to come. The Prince of Grisha was that same demon power that energized Alexander the Great and allowed Alexander the Great to conquer the entire known world at that time at the age of 33. Okay, so there's a, a lot of demon activity taking place. So here's, here's my point. I'm going to go lost my own rabbit hole. Here's the point. Is that we're made a little bit lower than the angels, and there are other angels made lower than certain angels, and you got king angels, and Lucifer is at the very top. Okay? Now, read this again. That through death he might destroy him, they have the power of death, that is the devil, he died to destroy the Satan, and he died by taking on the likeness of sinful man. He didn't die as God, he died as man. Yeah. And as man, being Lord of the angels, he defeated the angel. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. That's why he said, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Yes. Yes. Like he, the, the victory is already ours. Yeah. And he, 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 he defeated him when he went back to heaven, he defeated him on the earth. He defeated him on the cross by just dying, and when yes. he just died, he took away the power of death from Satan. Yes. And Satan had no more power of death. That's why he came out the grave and said, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. What power didn't he have? The power of death. Right. Now he got the keys. He gave us that message of the time he went down to hell. You know? He was going to go to hell on his own accord. Everybody else goes to hell by default. You die, you go to hell. Jesus said, no, no, I, I didn't die natural death. Nobody took my life. I laid it down. And I have the power to lay it down, which he did. He fulfilled the Old Testament law and died on the 14th day of Nisan between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m. and said it is finished and breathed out his life and went to hell and got down there. And hell was mystified because he wasn't invited. He wasn't dispatched there. Because nobody took his life. He just succumbed to death like other men do, you know. He, here's the case here where he, just, that he died for that purpose. Right. Wow. And I'll come to him and says, where's the keys? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine the commotion took place in hell that day? Mm -hmm. And he was already, he's already heralded by another one. 
when that, that thief who said, you know, remember me? And he says, today, you'll be in paradise. That thief came on the same day. He, he, he arrived with Jesus. He gets into details here, that, but they're really not that critical. He got a three-hour space in time, third hour, and night hour, 3, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. But that thief, to fulfill Jesus' words today, that thief, when he went around and checked him out, Jesus was dead, so he put the spirit aside. The two thieves had died yet. So they broke their legs. They broke the criminal's legs in case they should come out off the cross in some way and, and escape, so they made sure they weren't gone anywhere. And they broke their legs. So that thief, was still alive. But he died before 6 p.m. Can you imagine the ruckus he made down in hell? And said, I was just on a cross next to Jesus. And he said, today you're going to be in paradise? That thing said, hey, don't worry about anything. Today we're leaving here. Because that wasn't paradise. That was Abraham's bosom. Today you're going to leave here and go to the third heaven. That thing didn't know where he was at. But he didn't know it wasn't there. Then here comes Jesus. And they banned the keys. And Satan came down, and he had to give him the keys because there's a power that he didn't have. This man wasn't dispatched here by default. He came here. He came here with power from God, and he escaped that, and he got the power to come back to life again. What am I going to do when he goes back up to heaven again? So what did he do? He had no option but to give him the keys. And said so that Jesus set free a whole march of captives, took the key, opened the door, and set them all free. Empty Abraham's bosom. That's power. Yes. So when he came and said, all power in heaven and earth is given to me. What power didn't he have? The power over death and hell was taken had. And so he took that away. And delivered them who the fear of death for all of their lifetime. What's one thing everybody's afraid of? Dying. Every movie makes that a big deal. You know? Somebody dying. You know, get that real hard criminal sometime in the movie. You know, he don't care. Mm -hmm. And shoot me, you know, I, I was born to die. Yeah. But trust me, that's just Hollywood. <laughs> Every man is born with the fear of death. Yes. Because it's unknown. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what he's going into. But he knows one thing. I think when death comes around to visit a person, they know at that point in their life they got to rob it with God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And they begin to search their life. Mm -hmm. yeah, and check their life. And am I ready to meet God? And in most cases, they're not. They've cursed God, never went to his house, never prayed to him, and so on and so forth. Talked about folks who are who try to live godly, gladly. and now all of a sudden it's time to die. They got a terrible fear of death. Yeah. And so what I heard them, I don't know if it's apocryphal or not the truth, but I heard a testimony about a, an atheist who's about to die. And he said, Living a life of not believing in God is okay to live by. He said, it's not worth a dime to die by. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden, God gets real big and gets real weird. And then there's a scripture that says, prepare to meet that God. There's a preparation for death. Those who know God have no fear of death whatsoever. They welcome death. You know, like Paul said, you know, uh, to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. He said, I'd rather, I'd rather be with the Lord, but he told the Corinthian church, but if I'm with the Lord, I can't be with you. Right. So, I'll pass up on being with the Lord right now. Mm -hmm. stay, stay with I understand where Paul's coming from for the first time in the last couple of months, that uh, I'd rather die. I'd rather go to the Lord. But what it hit me, though, is that I have absolutely no fear of dying at all. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's the thing to do. Right. You know? <laughs> and I thought about you, I'd be behind, and I thought bad about you guys. But, you know, that's just the no way it is. <laughs> Somebody has to get up behind. <laughs> but I'm still here, so I wouldn't have one time. I was trying to press on for the end. I'm going to be here until the end, and that's just the way it is. And, you know, we're going to just have these emergency texts sometimes, and they're going to just stop and bring me through. Amen. 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 Truth Amen. Night, was night, I was not coming to night. I was still, I was still in bed, and I took pain pills at quarter till seven. And I told you, I said, let's give it 30 minutes. Yeah, I'll see how it works. So you think I can say this? 15. I said, go just give me a few more minutes. And at that point, I couldn't move. I couldn't get up. I couldn't even think about them. And so I decided, okay, I was going to church in my pajamas. And uh, it's pretty open, you know, to nobody really know. And 
then the Lord would like, the Lord would remind me that how I was when I had the pain, the terrible pain. He said, I, I, I broke that for you on Sunday and Wednesday, allowed to come and preach. It's amazing. Last Wednesday when I got finished, I was going to get in the car, I said, let's go right away. I think I got the message Sunday, and I said, I'm going home. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, it's warfare. I know that. I come in, I hit him as hard as I can, and he punches back. Right. Right. That's how it goes. He's not laying down because he's, I think Satan has discovered for the first time that this is the real deal here. Yes, amen. Yeah. And we're no longer hidden. We're, we're on the radar now. He's paying his close attention. Yes. He's paying the message close attention. And Satan may not believe in the truth or being the truth, but he knows God's voice. Yes. Yes. He's heard God's voice before he heard God speak. And he recognizes God's voice. And he knows that God's voice is going forth here. And that makes this place. You know, he made a mistake one time. You know, he, he didn't take Jesus seriously. Until Jesus appeared down in his domain. So <laughs> said Jesus became his worst nightmare. He ain't gonna make a mistake the second time. He's taking every one of us serious. Yeah. He stopped by our house Sunday and made the whole house sick. Mm -hmm. I understand that from my mind. Everybody was thrown up one time. It's like it's like it was orchestrated. Whole house got sick. And, 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 and someone mentioned the fact that you know what I my my said brother Stephanie, you know, that she doesn't she doesn't go to church or anything, why does she get sick? And she said because she was in the house. Mm -hmm. He attacked the house. He attacked everybody in the house and made them different with the church and that. You're in this house. I'm going to just come. And, and it, it shows how ruthless he is. Yeah. He made the little girl sick. He made the baby Tristan. He made him throw him Tristan. You know, he's all puzzled. You know, you know, the food should go this way. And all of a sudden, it's coming out. You know, and and he, got, he got sick. It shows how ruthless and violent Satan is. He doesn't care. Yeah. He's gonna, he lost a, a full flesh of time. And it just shows how real it is. You know? And yeah. one real warfare. That's just how it is. You know? and, I, I'm learning now that when I get an expression, I expect to catch him. You know? I did my throws, he did his throws. Yeah, I'll come back and throw him again next time, and he's going to throw him on next, next time, and that's just the way it goes. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm ready to do battle. I ain't got no problem with that. Yeah. I intend to knock him out. I intend to knock him into hell. Amen. Person? That's, that's wrong. Right, okay? Now, I have a lot of stuff to talk about tonight, but I'm not going to talk about any of this stuff tonight. The word is too good to mess it up, so let's just turn it off. Amen. Amen. Amen.